Praise the Lord. So good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Good to have you with us to worship and honor the Lord and praise His holy name. We got some empty seats in the choir. Some of you have been wanting to sing a solo. Come on, come on up here and sing with us. We'd love to have you sing with us and be a part of the choir. Praise the Lord. Sister, Sister Sheila, at the end, we've been trying to get some people recruited and nobody wants to be recruited. Praise the Lord. If I told you there was money involved with it, you'd all be running up here. Praise the Lord. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to have everyone of you with us. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate those watching live stream tonight. Just a joy to be in the house of the Lord. Appreciate those who came to our uh, men's and women's meeting. Appreciate you being here and all that you do. We're well, Lord in prayer. Just welcome his presence. Ask him to have his way tonight. To minister during our church service. You help us pray. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for allowing us to be in your house and to serve you and honor you to make it by your name, God. We just ask you to help us put everything down, Lord, and worship you tonight. This is your night. Lord, help us to be your people. Serve you and honor you. Make it by your name. Help us to be the people you call us to be, God. Just reach down and touch with the Holy Ghost and Lord shine forth in our lives. Top hand is on their feet. Help us to be what you have us to be. Help us to do your will and be your servant and be your best, Lord. We just ask you to move in a mighty way. Touch every life and every heart tonight, God. We'll be your people. We'll do your will. Help us to be one mind and one accord and serve you and honor you tonight, God. You're worthy of all praise. You welcome your presence. Ask me to have your way. In Jesus' holy name we pray. The church said, Amen. 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 You'll stand with us. Find you a hymn on page 130. 130. You're in two pebbles.
One day we'll know more than we know now. Amen? Amen. However, some of you might have thought you knew it all. But one... <laughs>
it's like just it just all falls out. And mm -hmm. I just tell them whatever I want to say because they open that up. And this year I've had a lot of those conversations and I thank God for being able to do that. Praise the Lord, yes. Hallelujah. God's good. Yes, he is. He's good. <laughs> On the throne. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. <laughs>
I can't understand why it's not um, customized for him. Um, I try to do that in children's church. You can ask Nikki. I try to customize what I do because each child, Easter learns differently than, than Emerson. And, and, you know, they're all different and they're, they're, all, they're all unique. And you can't stand up like the preacher does to preach to all of y'all. I can't do that back there. You have to do it individually for each child and, and have a certain way. There's a certain way I handle Easton that I wouldn't handle another child that way because that's what works for him. And that's what you have to do. And um, it just breaks my heart to, to hear her talk about it and everything. And he's just the sweetest. He's just the sweetest little boy. He really is. And for him to be able to drop him out and, you know, he could, he could be doing so much more than what he's doing. And it just breaks my heart. So just lift, lift up that little child and, yes. and just pray that they, that, um, God directs his path so that he's in the right place with the right teachers and the, the right people that can, they can help him. He is nonverbal. He's starting to learn sign language. He's doing really well with that, to be free. But just help lift up that family. Because right now they're at a crossroads and they really don't know whether to leave him where he's at or whether to pull him out to go somewhere else. And it's a hard decision to make because you're not sure which way to go. So just pray that the decision is easy for them, that they know it's the right one. Yes. Amen. Had to bring that to the Lord for God.
that you need to work out. Lord, reach out and touch on all people until we say it before it's too late. Touch all our children, bless their homes, our families, schools, God, move in a mighty way. Lord, reach out and touch King, and Lord, reach out and touch him, Michaela, and her family. Lord, reach out and help them to make the right decision, Lord, to do your work, to do what's, what needs to be done, God. Help everything to be all right. Lord, touch King, and Lord, touch uh, a man and a man, Lord, touch Tanner, God, reach out and bless their needs and situations. Touch Alan tonight, God, strengthen him and bless him, Lord, in a mighty way. Move and minister to that need. Lord, reach out and touch Sheila Lee's son and family, Lord, reach out and bless him in a mighty way. Touch him in a mighty way. Touch Joel's uh, uh, Tom and stepdad, Lord, reach out and touch him, Lord, take away that cancer, Lord, heal of that cancer, bless him in a mighty way. Lord, reach out and touch. Lord, reach out and minister to the need. Touch Joel's brother, Lord, reach out and touch him. God, you see that need, touch it in a mighty way. Touch Brother Daniel, Sister Carolyn. Reach out and touch their family, touch their home. Reach out and touch uh, Adeline and Caitlin, and their grandchildren. Lord, reach out and move in a mighty way. Reach out and bless. Lord, touch Chris. Help everything to go on right in the doctor's home. coming up. Lord, reach out and bless in a mighty way. Reach out and touch Nikki. Lord, help her doctor's home go well. Right and bless her. Touch her. Minister that need. Minister in that life. Lord, reach out and touch her in a mighty way. Lord, reach out and touch team. Touch uh, Tilly. Uh, angel, Lord, reach out and bless them with their family. Lord, continue to touch baby Amelia. Reach out and bless in a mighty way. Reach out and touch, Lord. Reach out and touch uh, angels of work. Lord, continue to bless and touch those children. Lord, reach out and bless in a mighty way. Continue to touch uh, my dad. Lord, reach out and touch him. Move in a mighty way, Lord. Touch him, Lord. Reach out and touch uh, George. Reach out and strengthen him and bless him. Lord, continue to minister in his need. Touch in a mighty way. Continue to touch uh, this Pam Morton. Lord, reach out and continue to touch her and Pam Trees. Lord, reach out and bless him. Lord, reach out and touch Mary, Lord, reach out and touch her right where she's at. Lord, touch little Sydney. Reach out to heal Sydney. Lord, reach out and touch that need. Touch John and Jane. Lord, they need a miracle. They need a touch. Lord, reach out and bless their life. Touch them. Minister their need in their situation. Lord, touch uh, uh, Sherry. Lord, reach out and heal her body. God, touch Sherry and Shirley and, Har and Harvey. Lord, reach out and bless them. Lord, heal Harvey. Get him out of the hospital. Touch Shirley and bless her. Go to have strength. And Lord, be able to deal with this. Lord, reach out and touch uh, Amy. Lord, get her out of the hospital. Reach out and bless in a mighty way. Reach out and touch in a mighty way. And then the Lord reach out and bless uh, beyond comparison. Lord, do the work, God. Lord, reach out and touch Wendy and Randy. Lord, we pray to our prayer calls this morning, God. You see their need. You know what they have need of before we even ask. God, I ask you to move their need. Lord, touch every life and every heart that will be on people. Touch those that are here tonight for whatever reason. Lord, strengthen them and bless them. Touch everybody watching live stream. Everybody viewing this week, God. Reach out and bless. Move in a mighty way. Touch these lives and hearts and souls. Do the work, God. We believe you, we trust you, we thank you for all these things are in your name. In your holy name we pray. The church say it. Next Sunday, Sunday School 10, more worship at 11, Sunday night at 6. Next Sunday, choir practice. Those of you who didn't want to get in the choir tonight, you can come out next Sunday afternoon to our choir practice, and we'll get you right on in the choir. Praise the Lord. Next Sunday afternoon at 5, choir practice. Uh, October 22nd, family Monday, 11 to 2. We'll have hot dogs, homely ice cream, popcorn, bounce house, um, hay ride. It's going to be a Dunkin' booth. we got uh, a couple of people who's been following, told them to be in a Dunkin' booth. I'm one of them, brother Tim, one of them. So uh, we, we've got a couple uh, uh, dumpers, so come on out and uh, dump some people. I think everybody wants to dump Tim, they ain't but a few will dump me. So, uh, so uh, praise the Lord. If you have all with your preacher, this is the time to make it right. Amen. 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 On that uh, family Monday, make sure you wear your cowboy shirt. But if you see him in a cowboy shirt, you know you've got to throw him under the water. You know, Praise the Lord. So don't forget about it. Every morning, a good time. Um, got, we have planned a lot of stuff in, uh, in our meeting tonight. Uh, you can get that in the bulletin soon. Um, uh, we plan our Christmas banquet and our, our Christmas programs and all those things coming up. So a lot of things happening, a lot of things taking place. Looking forward to that. Don't forget about that. Uh, if you want to go to the uh, uh, Christmas, uh, Operation Christmas Child Warehouse to uh, package the boxes at the warehouse, Please see, uh, see Angel, let her know. Uh, she's got the date of uh, November 23rd reserved from 6 to 10. Um, so we'll make sure you let her know so we'll know how many, uh, how many vehicles we need. We've we'll got the church van, how many, how many vehicles we need. Uh, everybody wants to go. If 13 and up can go, we we'll look forward to that. Um, we we'll look forward to that. Also, uh, we talked about um, uh, 
uh, having uh, all the uh, items. We'll get some papers with the items you can put in our Christmas box and package here. Uh, get those items list. We'll get those out. Hopefully we'll have them by Wednesday. Uh, get you an item list. Uh, we'd like to have all the items for these shoe boxes here by November the 9th. Uh, but we're talking, uh, I think the children's going to package them on November 16th, Wednesday night, November 16th. So November the 9th, if you can have all of them, that's Wednesday before. All, so that gives you a month uh, to uh, get those little things uh, for the shoe boxes. We're looking to make uh, at least 80 this year. Last year, I think it was 75, 77, somewhere like that. But we're going to make 80 this year. That way we're going to have more than last year. So uh, we look forward to that, uh, making those shoe boxes. If you got any extra shoe boxes laid around the house, uh, bring them on in. Uh, if you don't want them, uh, they'll, they'll use them to put your stuff in. Because uh, uh, for any shoe box that we don't have, uh, to make the age, we'll have to go purchase some uh, boxes. But um, So if you've got some, please, please, if you want to get rid of them, we'll take them. The most important that's when Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Very now he's coming for a church, coming for people. He's looking for him. Any other announcements? Don't forget about children's play practice. Children's program practice, play practice on Wednesday night. Yeah, if anybody needs a ride, let us know. Um, we uh, we to give them whatever the case may be. Praise the Lord. All right, I got volunteers for all for tonight. From Emerson and Emerson. I'm getting some timers. I had to thank a minute for the name Emma. <laughs> so, sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't, right? Heavenly Father, we thank you for an opportunity to give. Lord, thank you for these ushers we've got tonight. God, we thank you for blessing us with you. Lord, I ask you to reach out and bless every heart, every life, everyone that gives, everyone that don't have to give. God, you see the need. Lord, you use this for building your kingdom. Reach out and bless every life, your heart. We'll go forth and do your will. And Lord, just continue to minister through our hearts and we'll serve you and honor you and do your work. Uh, Lord, and be what you call us to be. We love you with praise. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Worship the Lord. Sister Reba, say this place. Well, I woke up at 3.30 this morning with this song going through my head. And it's been in there all day long. So I guess I'm supposed to sing this song tonight. I don't know. But we're going to see if we can get through it.
Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Just stand with us. Turn around and reach out and touch the Lord.
And the church said, Amen. Amen. Through Jesus, we can win. Through Jesus, we can win. You see, in some places, with a lot of people, you just can't win. In some sporting events, you just can't win. In some sporting venues, you just can't win. In some recreational activities, you just can't win. But let me tell you tonight that you can win with Jesus. Amen. No matter what you got going on, no matter what's taking place, you can win with Jesus. You are a winner. You are a winner with Jesus. You're in the winner's circle when you have Jesus as part of your life. You're in the winner's circle when you have Jesus as, as Lord of your life and you're working for Him. When you let Him uh, be in your life, you let Him have, have His way. Let Him uh, work in your life. Let Him work within you. As we look here, Peter is telling the uh, telling the people or the, the, the people that are scattered abroad. They're scattered in all kinds of areas. He's letting them know that there is a future that is coming. There is a future that's bright. A future that is great. A future that is better than it has been. A future that if they'll rely on God, if they'll believe God, if they'll trust God, that everything's going to be all right in the future, that uh, through thick and through thin, that they can make it, they can be a winner. You see, we can be a winner. We can live our life as a winner. And one day when we draw our last breath on this side, we can still be a winner because we get to go to a place called heaven, a place on the other side that's been prepared, hallelujah, for the saints that we can go there. You know, one day. We'll be gathered with the saints of old. One day we'll be gathered in that place called glory, in that place where the streets are made of pure gold and the walls are jasper and made of different stones and made of uh, all kinds of other stones and the gates are made of pearl. We'll be in that place, hallelujah, where everybody that's there is a winner because there's no losing with God, Amen. no losing with, uh, with Jesus. There's only losing that comes is with the devil Amen. and the enemy and the world's crowd. I want to talk about this tonight. First of all, uh, I've already alluded to it. I want you to understand. First of all, there is an inheritance. There is an inheritance. It says, Blessed be God, Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his blood and mercy has begotten again to a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that faileth not away reserved in heaven for you. Let me tell you, it's incorruptible. Heaven is incorruptible. The inheritance that you're going to get one day is incorruptible. You know, you might inherit some money, you might inherit some possessions, but all that's going to pass away. No, there's not been a U-Haul that's made it to glory. There's not been a bank account that's made it to glory. Uh, there's not been uh, anything that you can physically inherit on this side that's going to glory. The only thing going is going to be that soul that Jesus saves and Jesus works in. Hallelujah. Because we have an inheritance that is incorruptible. The moths won't destroy it because it's indestructible. It's invincible. You cannot destroy Jesus. You cannot destroy what Jesus has done in mankind's life. But you see, uh, throughout history, people have tried to do away with Jesus. Throughout the history, people have tried to discard Jesus. Throughout history, people have tried to get uh, away from Jesus. But let me tell you, you'll never be able to get Jesus out because Jesus is in control of this thing and Jesus is in control of heaven. Hallelujah. And one day he's coming back to take us home, church, to an incorruptible inheritance, a place where there's not going to be any corruption. There's not going to be any, there's not going to be any ailments. Any of you, some mornings when you get up to go to work, have you ever had back aches? Back pain. Have you ever had foot pain? Praise the Lord. Have you ever had just all kinds of pain? Probably have sometimes you live with pain. Oh! Don't you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just playing with you. It's all right to laugh. Laughter is good for the soul. As we look and we understand. One day, there'll be no corruptible. There'll be no pain in that place called heaven. An incorruptible life. So there's going to be no more pain, no more heartache, no more, none of those other things. You see, there is an inheritance that we can receive if we'll live for the Lord. Uh, there, there's all kinds of uh, goodness and good things in heaven that we don't even know about. We haven't even been told about. Our minds can't even fathom just what the Bible tells us about heaven. But everything about heaven is not written down. There's a lot of things that we don't know about heaven that are great. But everything that we've seen in the Bible, I mean, our minds 
gods can't even fathom. Uh, you can't even fathom eternity. Can't even fathom forever and ever and ever. We can't even fathom no pain or heartache. We can't even fathom no tears. We can't even fathom no devil. Amen. We can't even fathom no sin around us. We can't even fathom no wickedness. We can't even fathom no breaking down. You see, when you think everything's going good and, and everything's just going you on top of the world, what happens? Something breaks down. Whether it be a car, a washing machine, a stove, a refrigerator, something breaks down on them. That's why we got all the fix-up shops. That's why we got that's why we got parts houses, because everything is made with hands of physical man yep. is gonna break down. Well let me tell you, hallelujah, that place called heaven was not made with man's hands. But that place called heaven was made, hallelujah, by God himself. Then uh, when Jesus went there, went away, he said, I go to prepare a place that where I am, you may be also. He went to a place, hallelujah, that's prepared where the saints abide and the saints can abide, hallelujah. And we get to go there because that's an inheritance we can have. But we have to serve the Lord. We have to serve him to, re to, to, to receive this, to get this. It's greater than anything on earth. Now, I know there's a lot of places, you know, some of you may like the beach better than the mountains. Some of you might like the mountains better than the beach. Some of you might just like staying at home. That's okay. But let me tell you, heaven's greater than any of those things. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you know why? Because heaven is our home. Yes. This place around here is not our home. This is just a passing through place. This is just a this is just a place that we've got to uh, we've got to tolerate or get by until he calls us until he calls us home. You see, one day, oh listen to this, one day we're gonna be moving out of this home into that home, and guess what? We ain't gonna pack no boxes, take up no boxes. Drive no you haul to haul stuff around. Hey. Is anybody here to love moving? Uh, mm -hmm. No. Moving's a job. Moving's a job. When you pack up things and move, it's a job, man. It's a job. Nobody likes it. But one day when we move from this side to that side, there won't be no packing up and, and, and sealing boxes and stacking boxes and unloading. Hallelujah. We're going to move from this side. Hallelujah. We're going to get a new zip code on the other side. Hallelujah. That's an inheritance that we can look forward to. So it ought to make us happy. It ought to make us uh, excited. It ought to make us realize, hallelujah, the power of Christ, the power of Jesus that he has. Hallelujah. The power of Jesus that he has and he's given us that we can, uh, we can be a winner. And heaven is uh, created for the mankind, create, created for us to have that where he is we can be. Then that's what, that's what ought to make us every day to keep going. He put one foot in front of the other. You know, you see, sometimes we need that encouragement. You know, kind of like if you're trying to train a dog. Or kind of like if you're trying to train a parrot. You kind of, you kind of, you, you got to have a, a little, little cookie or a cracker or some kind of something. When you train something, come here. Come here, come here. And you bring, bring that cookie away and you have that dog or that animal or that cat, whatever you're training. Do what you want to do. You know, you kind of, you kind of have to, you kind of have to entice you kind of have to uh, pull them along. You have to encourage them. You know what? Well, we as humans, sometimes we have those days, weeks, months, years that we've got to be encouraged. We've got to be enticed. And what entices us is heaven. Heaven should entice us. Hallelujah. When he, when he tells us that we can inherit this place, we can have this place that is great. Hallelujah. You know, those that, those that sister the end got horses. Those that have horses, you know, they like apples, don't they? Yep. If you get apples, they'll come to you and eat out of your hand, won't they? I've fed horses before with apples. I know how it is. Uh, they, they, they like to come to it. And you can pat them and you can rub them. And, and, and you, can just, you can just be their friend because they'll come in. You entice them. You see, heaven ought to be an enticing. Uh, for Jesus, uh, his blood on Calvary should entice us enough to be saved. And once we're saved, heaven should be enticing enough to keep holding on to Jesus. To keep holding on to serving God. That should be enticing enough to just serve the master. The one that gave us all. The one that created a place that we can go to. That should be enticement enough, right? Should be enticement. Amen? Amen. Should be enticement enough. We shouldn't need enticement. We shouldn't have to have the preacher begging us. Or a teacher begging us. Or a singer begging us. Or mom, dad, brother, sister begging us to be a Christian. Amen. We've got enough enticement here to last us. Till we get to glory. Amen. But sometimes people forget about that inheritance. That's much better than an earthly inheritance. People forget about it because you see, people want now. People want it now. Now, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm not a patient person. I'm, I'm impatient. You know, I shoot them. Yes. I'm impatient. Uh, you know, want it now. But you, you know, so, but, I, but I have more patience than I used to have. 
But, um, thank you now, but uh, you see, uh, you know, uh, everybody wants to, and so, you know, people, that's why people are enticed and brought into these things that they get involved with in the world, is because they want this now, they want this certain thing, this certain thing now, and so they indulge in the things of life, the sins of life, just to make things work out, to make things uh, happen in their life right then when, when that wasn't the time, because you see, there's a time and a place and a purpose that God has in store, there's a time and a season for everything, amen, there's a time and a season that God has in store. And so we've got to get back to the place and like Peter's trying to tell them, you know what, you, you've got an inheritance, but there's something that you're going to have to uh, be, be searching on or something that you've got to uh, go through if, and that is trials. <laughs> trials. We're all going to have to go through trials. That's the second thing. We will have trials. If you haven't had a trial this week, you hold on. But one's coming. Every saint of God is going to have a trial, a circumstance, something that's not going to go like they would rather it go or want it to go. It's not going to go. Listen to what he said. He says, Ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation. What does that mean? That means many. Manifold means many. Many temptations. You're in heaviness. Because of your many temptations, because of the many trials that's coming your way, because of the many storms that come in your life, because of the things that are coming that are causing problems, the things that are coming in your life that are causing you discomfort and things like that. And so, you know, a lot of times people think, well, once I get saved, I'm not going to have no trials. Let me tell you, that's a lie from the devil because when you get saved, that does not exempt you from having trials and tribulations in your life. You know what? You probably have more trials and tribulations because Jesus is on your side and the devil don't want you on the side of Jesus. The devil don't want you to be a winner. The devil don't want you on the win side because the devil thinks that he's going to win or be able to defeat you. But he knows that he's already defeated. He knows that his days are numbered. He knows that one day he's going to be cast into the lake of fire. He knows that. That's why he's seeking who may devour. He's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. He's trying to destroy the church, trying to destroy God's word and God's work. That's why we got to hold on. But you see, there'll be trials. There'll be many trials and many temptations that'll come to our path. Uh, daily, weekly, monthly, but you know what? We can still hold on because we've got an inheritance. we got to remember. You see, I, I said this morning, I think I'll say it again. Uh, I remember everything I don't forget. Well, there's one thing I don't forget is that i got an inheritance in heaven. Amen. I might forget a lot of things. I might have that sometime where I have to think a minute about what I'm fixing to say or about somebody's name, but I tell you right now that I remember there's an inheritance in heaven one day that's waiting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't have to fall for the traps or the tricks of the devil. You don't have to fall for the traps or the tricks of the devil. You don't have to fall for the things that come your way. We're all going to face those trials. And you know what? We're all going to go through things that we don't like. But we have God on our side. And we also have brothers and sisters in Christ that will help us pray about those things. Because I'm sure everybody in here, we've heard a prayer request tonight. We all have know and have someone that we've been praying about. You might not have gave it in openly tonight, but you all, hey, we all in this building, I would dare say, have somebody we've been praying about in our prayer time. You know what? Or maybe ourselves going through the trial or situation. We all have things we're going to go through, but we can overcome. We can make it. We don't have to be destroyed. We don't have to be beaten down. We don't have to be depressed, oppressed, repressed, uh, suppressed. All we got to do is understand that God is alive and well. He's going to take care of us. He's going to make sure everything. We might go through many uh, temptations. The enemy might rage many, many times. Hallelujah. He might stand at that door and try to get us to let him in, uh, in, in our door, in our nook and cranny. But let me tell you, don't let the devil in. Just keep holding on to God. Keep trusting and believing because you've got an inheritance with the Lord. He said, He said, Be <clears throat> wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perisheth though it be tried with fire, might be found in the praise and honor and glory of the appearing of Jesus Christ. So when you go through those trials, the more trials you go through, and I know we don't like what I'm fixing to say. The more trials you go through and the bigger, harder trials you go through, the stronger your faith is going to get. Amen. Amen. If you only go through a little situation, you're only going to have faith to get you through the little situation. But when there's that big situation, whatever it may be, you've got to have faith to get through that. And when you do, you realize that, hey, I had to have faith during that, during that big situation. And I know this next one that comes up, or the next one that's here now, I'm going to be able to go through this trial with faith, believing, 
and it'll increase your faith. Every time we go through a trial, it increases our faith. Everywhere in the Bible, you see where God was blessing people. Didn't they go through trials? Didn't they go through situations? People were chasing people. People were after them. If they served God, somebody was out to get them. If they lived for God, somebody was out to get them. If they did the work of the Lord, somebody was out to get them. You know, in the New Testament, as we look, uh, when Jesus was, was doing the will of the Father, when Peter was, was doing the work, when Paul was doing the work, when Silas was doing the work, when uh, Bartholomew was doing the work, when, uh, uh, when all the different ones, uh, uh, Mark, uh, Luke, John, uh, Timothy, all those ones were doing the work of the Lord. What, what happened? The chief priests and scribes and all the people come against them. They didn't want no part of them. They didn't, didn't, didn't want them doing what, what the Lord wanted. They wanted to do their own thing. Trials and tribulations were coming. Trials and situations were coming. Circumstances were coming. But you know what? They could hold on because God was going to be right there with them. He said he would be with us, church. He said he would go through these things. But he'd go through the fire with you. Yea, though you walk through the... So you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You can fear no evil. You don't have to worry about the evil in this world. You don't have to worry about the evil that's taking place. What you need to concentrate on, what I need to concentrate on, is that we're serving an awesome God that every trial we go through, it's building our faith, it's growing our faith, because when it's tried, it's going to show that it's proven. Our faith is proven to get us through. You see, because when you talk to people about about church and about God and about serving the Lord, uh, they uh, many times they'll ask you questions, won't they? They'll say, well, what have you went through? Or what did you do about this scenario? Or how did you overcome this? Or how did you overcome that? They ask you these things. And, and if you haven't been through those things, you won't be able to tell them. But when you've been through that trial, and they say, how did you get through this situation? You say, well, let me tell you, my brother or my sister. Let me just tell you. I, I, was, I was in dire straits, and I had this situation going on, and it kind of resembles, it might not be exactly like your scenario, but it kind of resembles, but what I did is I just kept pressing through, and I kept pressing on, and I kept trusting God, and I just kept the faith, and I got through that, hallelujah, and I came out on the other side victorious, came out on the other side smiling, knowing that everything was going to be all right, and so I know that, that God will do the same for you, my brother and my sister. You can get through that trial. That's how we help and encourage other people. That's how we reach the lost in any cause. That's how we win souls to the kingdom of God. That's how we get people into God's house because, uh, because people want to see results. People want to see results. People want to see what happens, what works good. You know, I, I like fish. Uh, I don't fish as much as I like to. I don't fish as much as Terry would like to. Uh, we, uh, we're going to get some fishing, a fishing time to go. But anyways, um, I've fished bass tournaments before. And, I, I, you know, you know, in bass fishing, you've got all kinds of lures that they sell at the stores. And, you know, one fisherman says, oh, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. And the next one, this is the greatest thing since sliced butter. And, you know, you, you just got all kinds of lures. And you get these lures, and you go out there and you fish all day and don't catch a fish. And you're thinking, what in the world is going on? Because uh, everything don't work for everybody in that exact same scenario. There's all kinds of choices, all kinds of things out here to choose from in, in the fishing. I, I'm getting somewhere, just bear with me. Uh, all kinds of these lures, and you, you pick this one that you think works because somebody said it. And so, uh, you know, you buy it, it don't work, what do you do? You quit using that, you try something else. But the one lure or the one pack of lures or whatever that you find when you go fishing, you catch a couple fish each time you go, maybe you're fishing for a crappie or catfish or whatever, and you catch a bunch, you know what you do? You go to that store that you bought that pack of hooks or, or, or worms or whatever you bought from, and if it's plastic lures, and you go back and buy some more, you get about three or four packs this time, because that worked for me, I'm, I'm going back. You see, you, 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 had to, you had to get the right one that worked for you. You see, that's what people want. They want to see what works for them. Not everything works for everybody in the same way. Not everybody, everything works for everybody in the same manner. So when we tell people, when we reach out to people, uh, they want to see results. That's what I'm talking about, results. You see, the, the, the Lord that caught the fish, that was showing results. So you say, hey, hey, hey. Terry, I need you to buy this uh, chartreuse uh, lizard here. This is what catches all the fish. That's what we're going to catch fish on the next time. And so you know what he does? He goes out and buys uh, chartreuse uh, lizards. And I go buy a chartreuse lizards. Tim goes out and buys chartreuse lizards. We go fishing and catch a bunch of fish, have a big fish fry, right? You know, that's, that's the mindset. That's the thing we're thinking about uh, because of results. But if I say, well, I've been told this will work, but I ain't caught a fish. I fish for this every time I go. I've been a hundred times a year. I ain't caught a fish. You know what Terry's going to say? I'm not spending my money on that. I'm not getting that. You keep it yourself. I don't want to hear nothing about it. I, I'll find whatever works for me. 
That's what he's going to say. You know why? Because I didn't show the results. But when you show people uh, in a Christian world, when you show people that Jesus gives results, that Jesus has done the work in your life, that Jesus has touched in your life, that Jesus has healed you, uh, that Jesus saved you, saved by the filled with the Holy Ghost, that Jesus blessed your family, that Jesus blessed you your house, that Jesus blessed you uh, with, with your vehicle, or whatever the case, when you show people results, guess what? They'll begin to take notice and say, wow, maybe I'll try that. And they begin to talk to the Lord. And they begin to change their life around. And before long, you've helped somebody accept Jesus as a personal Savior because you showed them results in your life. You see, I can't tell about everybody else's results in their life. I've only got my story I can tell. Now, I can tell scenarios and stories that people tell me and people have given me how Jesus saved them or Jesus touched them in their life. I can give examples. But people want to hear what's going on in your life. What's happening to you. Because they're looking at you. When you're talking to somebody, they're not looking at me. I'm not there with them. But you're there with them, and they're looking at you. If, let me just let me just be, be more blunt. If you tell them that the Lord that the Lord has has uh, has healed you, and you your arm that you had you had a hurt arm, and now your arm is doing good, but you over there talk to them saying your arm is good, and you stand there in a sling, they're gonna be thinking something wrong with this guy. <laughs> Right? If you tell them your arm's good and your arm's in a sling, there's something wrong. They're not going to believe that your arm is healed because you're there in a sling. Right. Amen? So if they're not seeing the results, if they're not seeing what you're saying, if they're not picking up what you're putting down, there's a problem. Amen. There's a situation in, in, in the scenario. So we've got to get back to the place to we say, you know what? Even though we've had these trials, it helped me to be stronger. Even though I've had these situations, help me to be stronger. Every situation we get through, our faith grows a little bit bigger, a little bit deeper, don't it? Our faith begins to grow because every one of us has situations that help us, uh, help us to get through. And we've had problems and circumstances. You know, uh, those times of trouble, those times when we, when we was worried about situations, scenarios. But God showed up and God showed out. Hallelujah. And you had the victory. You know why? Because you're a winner with Jesus. Hallelujah. And your faith continued to grow. Amen. Your faith continues to be what it needs to be. <laughs> Hallelujah. We can find that we can press through the problems and the trials and situations. And thirdly, thirdly, when we, when we, when we realize there's an inheritance and we know that we can have the faith to get through these trials, thirdly, we need to know that we can rejoice. Amen. That we can rejoice. Hallelujah. That we can rejoice. Hallelujah. He said, verse 8, Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now you see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Hallelujah. That's exactly what we should have when we think about the goodness and the mercy of God. The joy unspeakable and full of glory. We should be able to rejoice, hallelujah, and when the world is crumbling down as it looks on the outside, and when the world is having all the issues going on, all the fighting, all the wars, all the threats of, of nuclear stuff, all the threats of all this, we can rejoice and we can have that joy unspeakable because you know what? We serve an awesome God, hallelujah. We don't have to worry about these things. But let me tell you, honey, if, if, if some type of war breaks out or some type of nuclear stuff breaks out or whatever, the bad things break out, guess what? It's a shortcut to glory. Hallelujah, because they're in heaven where we want to end up for eternity one day. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not saying push it and go out here and push things and run out from a transport truck and say, well, I try to dodge me or miss me now. I'm not saying do that. What I'm saying is we need to quit worrying about what's going on in the world and we need to praise God and rejoice and magnify His holy name because He can get us through anything that's taking place. There's nothing that's called our God off guard. Amen. Nothing has caught our God off guard. Everything that has went on and goes on is because the Lord has allowed it. If the Lord, if the Lord does not allow it, it will not happen. Amen. Will not happen. God has, and God allows these things. God has allowed these things. It's everybody, Matthew 10 and 28. Jesus speaking. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So you see, we, we, we've got to get out of the mindset of fearing what man can do and just trust God and believe that he's going to take care of us. Do believe that he's going to uh, take care of us and help us to go. You know, just because the world says, go get in, get along, go along, and just do what, what, what everybody else does, just because 
world says it and the world don't like it when we don't, you keep doing what God says do. You don't want to, don't bow down to your, don't bow down to your moral, the morals and the standards that God has placed. God, don't bow down to this world. Don't bow down to the things of this world. Hallelujah. You know, they, they, they harbor and complain and they, uh, you know, uh, they, uh, they harbor and complain about us preaching the truth and us teaching the, the truth and what's right in the word of God I'm talking about where you're, uh, you're, you're trying to be offensive and you're trying to, you're trying to be this and you're trying to be a hate group or this or that. Let me tell you, there ain't no hate group. What it is is the word of God. We need to quit bowing down to what man wants and let God have his way in our life. Let God see that we're rejoicing in him because he's the one that can destroy both body and soul. He's not a, he's the one that destroy both those things. Man can only destroy body. Man can only do so much. The most that man can do is kill. That's the most man can do to you. But you see, they can't do nothing to the soul. They can't take out what Jesus puts in here. Amen. 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 Nobody can take out what Jesus put in here. Nobody can take it out. You have that. You can, you can take it out. You can quit serving Jesus if you want to. It's your business. But the world can take it out. And so we've got to get back to a place that we say, you know what? I'm not going to fear what man can do. I'm just going to be truthful and I'm going to be right with God. I'm going to serve God and do what He tells me to do. We don't have to bow down and, and cower down. We don't have to give in to the tricks and the things of the world. We don't have to give in just because the world likes it, because the world wants it done a certain way. We need to do it God's way. Amen. We need to be for God and do, do the work of God and, and, and be who God's called us to be and, and do what God's called us to do. You know, they don't like it when we preach when we preach strong, you know, and, and people, the world don't like it when we preach that you got to live right and you got to do right and you got to live holy. They don't like that. But you know what? We can't we can't water down or cower down because the enemy says you ought not to preach so strong. Oh yes, oh yes, preacher, your you, you, you church uh, congregation would would run about four hundred if you just if you just quiet down a little bit and not be so boisterous and not preach about living right. If you just preach prosperity and preach about oh everything's going to be good and everything's going to be wonderful. Well, you have about 400 uh, going to church service. So let me tell you, hallelujah, I'm not going to be responsible for sending 400 to a devil's hell. I'm going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I'm going to tell what, what God says and what God wants done. And holiness is God's standard of living, and right living is right living, and wrong living is wrong living. And I'm going to stand up and preach it until the Lord calls me home. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord. Is looking for some people to say, you know what? I, I remember, like Peter was trying to, I remember I got inheritance. And I'm going to go through tough times. But you know what? I can even rejoice in those tough times. When things are looking gloomy and new, I can rejoice. You know, like the time, me, me and Brother Terry, got, we got to go fishing one time this year. We're going to try to go again. Me and Terry went fishing. We ain't caught a fish yet. But guess what we did catch? Some rocks. But we had a good time. We got to be out there and we got to, we got to talk and just, 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 just had a good time. We had a stray dog come up on us and we, we thought he was going to get out there and get, in our, get our hook and we was going to have a hook dog and then we was going to be in a mess have to try to get it out of the dog. Uh, you know, if it had happened, didn't we? We thought, yeah. well, don't tell me. <laughs> so, so these things that you know we try to try not to uh, and so we, we didn't catch we didn't catch that but you know what we still have a good time that's the way it is with God's people uh, you can still have a good time serving God even though you're not indulging in the worldly things or going agreeing with the worldly stuff you can still have a good time and do what God's called you to be you can have a, I have a good time serving serving the Lord I have a good time being a Christian I have a good time hallelujah doing what he tells me to do praise the Lord Hallelujah. It's all right. It's all right not to be mean. Amen. It's all right not to be hateful. It's all right not to curse and rant and rave and It's all right. There's a lot of people that I've run into throughout my uh, secular job and, and throughout ministry. There's a lot of people that I come in contact with that, that, that they speak curse. They don't, they, don't, they don't speak English. They speak curse. They every word about they say out of their mouth is a curse word. Cursing and rant and rave. And I'm thinking, my goodness. You know, I've even, I've even told some, some kids at the schoolhouse, I've said, I've said, what you need is, is some soap in your mouth. I told them, I'm just old school. I told them, and I also told them what they needed was a belt on their behind, too. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. 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 yeah, because, you know what, we, 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 we've, got to, we've got to stand up for what's right. We still rejoice in God. 
We rejoice when, when, when people are, are running away and falling away from God and people are going in different directions from God and, and don't want to serve Him. We can still serve Him. We can rejoice in God. We don't know. We can still do We're winners. We're winners. The world can say what they want to about the Christian. The world can do what they want to about the Christian. But let me tell you, they can't take the fact of that you're a winner out of you. You're a winner. If you've got Jesus, you're a winner. If you've got Jesus in your life, you're a winner. You've got an inheritance. You might have trials and tribulations. You will have trials and tribulations coming your way. You will have temptations coming your way. Things that you don't like. Things that you don't want to have to go through. But when you get through there and that faith holds you up and you keep getting stronger, you'll be able to rejoice and praise His holy name. And before long, hallelujah, you're rejoicing at times when you're thinking, man, I've been humming a song. I've been singing a song. You know, sometimes maybe on the job you're working. Now, I don't know, maybe you've had this happen already. On a job, you're working, doing whatever your job is, and all of a sudden you just start, you just begin to think about what you're, what you're saying or what's going on, and you're singing a song. Or you're humming a song. Maybe, maybe you've done that in the shower. Just be taking a shower, thinking about the goodness of God before long, you're humming and you're singing. Or maybe you've been laying in the bed and wake up in the middle of the night. My sister, Rita, wakes up at 3 o'clock. I wish she would call Candace at 3 o'clock. That would help Candace out. But, anyways. <laughs> She would wake up there, you know what? And she got that song in her head. What happened? It stayed in her head. Uh, she got thinking about the goodness. Of, that's called rejoicing. Now, I'm sure she wasn't too thrilled about being woke up at 3 a.m. Uh, but she was rejoicing because she was rejoicing tonight. She sung that song good, didn't she? Rejoicing. I'm talking about rejoicing. And it's, and it's good to rejoice in the Lord. It's good because we're winners. We're winners. We're winners. Whether we go or whether we stay, we're winners either way. Amen. Hallelujah. He calls us home tonight, or he gives us another year. We're winners either way. Amen. We're winners. You're a winner, I'm a winner. We're all winners if we have the Lord as Lord of our life. Hallelujah. If you'll stand with me tonight, yeah. hallelujah. We're winners. Oh, we're all home folk tonight. Because anyone watching live stream or view, and you don't know the Lord, I know the Lord's already pricked your heart. All you got to do is repent of your sins, turn from your wicked way, and ask the Lord to save your soul, and he will. And all the home folk here, all the ones here, that are serving the Lord. All you got to do is say, Lord, and I will pray. Say, Lord, help me to continue to be that winner you call me to be. Lord, pray, pray in your own way, but say, Lord, I know I'm going to go through trials and tribulations, but help me to rejoice when I get through them. Help me to have that faith build up or that faith stronger each time and help me to grow in you, God. And you know what? He'll help me to grow in Him He'll help you to be what you need to be. And he'll help you to continue every day to grow in grace and mercy and to grow in how much you rejoice and grow in faith and grow in belief. And you'll grow every day. And God will just be there with you and help you. So as we pray, just ask God to help you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be in your house tonight. Thank you for this message, Lord. It's encouraged me, Lord. It's, it's just encouraged my life. God, I thank you for this, Lord. I thank you, Lord. We're a winner. Either way, whether we go, whether we stay, we're a winner. Either way, God, we're a winner with you because you're in our life. Lord, if there's anyone watching live stream or here that's lost and undone, I know you've already sent the, uh, the conviction out, Lord, they're proved in their heart, and uh, they need to repent. Lord, when they repent, please come in their life, save them, forgive them, cleanse them, change them, help them to be right and do right. Lord, everyone here that's ready to go, that's been bought by the first blood of the Lamb, that's saved, uh, Lord, and we're sanctified and we're set apart for you and your glory. God, I ask you to use us in moments, Lord, help us to go forth and do your will and be that light. Help us to go forth and be that witness. Lord, reach out and help us. Lord, go through trials and tribulations. Help us to stand fast and stand forth on your word. Help us to stand fast through these trials and tribulations. Help us to rejoice through them, knowing you'll get us through because we've got an inheritance one day. We've got a place called heaven one day that we'll call, that we'll call home. God, I just ask you to touch every life here, Lord, everyone. Lord, under the sound of this voice, Lord, help us to go forth and do your will. Lord, help us to be those winners every day. Help us to continue to walk in you. Walk in grace, grow in grace, grow in faith. Every trial we go through, help us to grow in faith so we can get stronger with you and be, and be what you have us to be. Lord, help us to do your will and tell others about your love and your mercy. Lord, help us to continue to serve you and rejoice and praise your holy name, God. Do your work and do your will. Lord, we love you tonight, God. We ask you to go with each and every one. Keep them safe as they travel in different ways. Touch all our children. Bless them in a mighty way. Reach down and touch those that could be here not for whatever reason. Those who are sick and afflicted, bless them in a mighty way. Touch them in a mighty way. Lord, touch us that we'll be a vessel. We'll be witnesses of honor for you throughout this world that we live in. Lord, we love you. We honor you. We praise you. We thank you for all things. In Jesus. Holy name we pray. The church said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Smile at your neighbor. Shake your hand. I know you're glad to see us.
Jesus loves you. Pastor David loves you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Give it to God. God bless you.